So why is it easy to push you back? Yeah. So just come up again. So it's important that we work on that hinge in their hips, all right, so that they're not sitting back too much and, and folding down, that they're getting a bit of a, a stretch on that right leg. You should get a bit of a stretch on the hammy when you come down and try and get them to hinge so the chest comes down in front of the knee, all right? And just maybe uh, take your back foot um, back a little bit so you, yeah, so you look at you can take off on it. Perfect. Yeah, that's better. Don't be afraid to be on the balls of your feet. Good. Well, that's better. I can't push you back. Nice and balanced. Right, let's just see how he's going with his, uh, what do you reckon? Chest down a bit more. Drop the chest down. Maybe take that knee out slightly. That's good. Keep coming down a little bit more. Good. You're nearly there. It's pretty good. Stay there. How's he look? Come up. Okay, the only thing I'd say is how much power can you get through that back leg? If it's close compared to taking it back a little bit. Uh, we don't mean much if it's close. Yeah, exactly. So try it just back a little bit. So, yeah, there we go. Good. Nice bend in the knees as well, so come down. That heel might just be off the ground a little bit. Now you should be able to, that's good. Because with that, what happens with this foot here on the bind, just before, it's just after the bind. It goes across the, the back. Yeah, it comes back. So you need weight in that foot to help it, don't you? Perfect, all right, that's good. So if you feel a bit stronger there? Yeah, yeah good. Excellent, come up right. I need you two just to rip that out. Okay, coaches, so what we've got is a good hinge. So he's got a really good setup, but what I'm looking at here is, is his hip and foot are there, that's square, but his spine is heading off at about 11 o'clock, when really we want his head more at 12 o'clock. So if you move your hips like that, that, that there compared to that there is a scrum going left and down and the whole thing spinning around, purely just based on how the hook is set up. Okay, so what we want is that square okay and you probably need to know he's doing it okay break did you notice the difference there what did you do to get square straightened up on my right leg straightened up on your right leg okay see if you can wrap that again be square but and hinging and chest nice and forward there we go look at that that's perfect now you're square got that square so what we get now on our live scrum is the hooker hitting straight in. He's not going to be heading out that way, which can cause all sorts of issues as we know. Okay, so good thing to monitor as a coach. We're coming in, had a couple of issues with the scrums collapsing, have a look at the hooker and help him out. And it could be that he's sitting out really nicely and the prop's pulling him over as well. So he needs to monitor that, okay? So that as long as he is a good place to watch, on the engage, just have a quick look from behind. Are they all spine in line? Okay. So all the stuff we've done in the one-on-ones, square feet, square hips, spine in line, applies right through one-on-ones to our setup. And you can st you can stay like that all day. Eh?